governed in this country, uh, but despite the popular will. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a straightforward assault by the elitists in this country. Robert Zolak, the architect of the Association of American Free Trade Agreements, mentioned in Lou Dobbs' story, is one of the many power brokers heavily involved in advancing the new world order and global governance. In May of 2007, President Bush nominated him to be the next president of the World Bank, where he will have the quiet power to implement many of his ideas, including the new proposal advanced by President Bush at the G8 meeting in June 2007. So my proposal is this. By the end of next year, America and other nations will set a long-term global goal for reducing greenhouse gases. To help develop this goal, the United States would convene a series of meetings of nations that produced most greenhouse gas emissions, including nations with rapidly growing economies like India and China. Although the Bush climate plan is far superior than the Kyoto Protocol, it still begs the question, if the probability that increasing carbon dioxide will result in potentially tremendous benefits for mankind and the environment, why pursue the reduction of carbon dioxide at all? Could it be because it establishes a huge international bureaucracy which is not accountable to the citizens of the United States and the world? That is very, very clear in these United Nations documents that they want to set up a regulatory structure that would affect every man, woman, and child on planet Earth and all of the control would be headquartered in the United Nations. And if we take the more recent United Nations documents, it's going to be called the Trusteeship Council in the restructure of the United Nations that's occurring right now. While these plans are being made for everyone else, those demanding that we make these sacrifices have no intention of making the same sacrifices themselves. All right, now I'd like to put up the little pledge thing here. I'm gonna ask you if you would like to commit here today you know how many hundreds of thousands of fans you have out there that would like to follow your lead. And this pledge merely says, as you can read it up there, that you're agreeing to consume no more energy in your residence than the average American household by one year from today. Not right now, by, you've got a whole year to, look, uh, to try to do this. Now, the one thing I'd like to have you not use in response to this question, which is a yes or no question, is the various gimmicks. Now, I have something I want to uh, submit for the record, Madam Chairman, that talks about the effects, the offsets and the credits are gimmicks used by the wealthy so they don't have to change their lifestyles. This, and I have an article that is last Sunday's United Kingdom Times. I'd like to add, uh, uh, submit for the record at this time. You may. All right, what's your answer? purchase wind, wind energy uh, and other green energy that does not produce carbon dioxide. Uh, and th that does cost a little more now, and that is one of the reasons uh, why uh, uh, it costs a little more. In fact, Al Gore uses 17 times more electricity than the average American. The average American uses 11,256 kilowatts annually while the Gores use an almost unbelievable 191,000 kilowatts. Yet Al Gore casually justifies this because he uses green energy that only the rich can afford. That kind of hypocrisy is not confined to the Gores. Actor John Travolta also claims that we should all sacrifice in order that we reduce carbon dioxide emissions. Yet he owns five airplanes that he can use to jet around the world, all parked within walking distance of his home in Florida. Listen to what the author of State of Fear and movie producer Michael Crichton says about this hypocrisy during the March 2007 Intelligence Squared debate. Actually, all anybody really wants to do is talk about it. They don't actually do anything. And the evidence for that is the number of major leaders in climate who clearly have no intention of changing their lifestyle, reducing their own consumption, or getting off private jets themselves. If they're not willing to do it, why should anybody else? Let's have the NRDC, the, the Sierra Club, and Greenpeace make it a rule that all of, their, all of their members cannot fly on private jets. They must get their houses off the grid. They must live in the way that they're telling everyone else to live. And if they won't do that, why should we? And why should we take them seriously? Whether we move left or right or center, the destiny of our country ought to be determined by Americans. And to see our own leaders surrendering that sovereignty to global institutions, it seems to me it really approaches a sellout and a betrayal 
of the founding fathers and of the idea for which America was founded. What you have seen in this video is only a small part of the evidence that the current warming of the earth is natural. We hope this evidence has helped you understand both sides of this critical issue. We hope you ask yourself why the global warming alarmists try to convince you that the ice core data shows that carbon dioxide levels have controlled the earth temperature in the past when most of the time temperature preceded the carbon dioxide levels or why the troposphere is not warming according to what the carbon dioxide warming theory states it must. Then ask yourself why there is not a good correlation between carbon dioxide levels and the temperature when there is very good correlation between solar or cosmic radiation levels and temperature. Finally, ask yourself why you are never told that much higher levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide could provide a huge benefit to people in the Earth's environment. On the other hand, there is strong evidence that an elite is using global warming as one of the many tools to impose global governance in the United States and around the world. If successful, this agenda promises to bring wealth and power to a global elite and transnational corporations at a terrible expense to the average person, just like you. We ask that you think hard on the choices that this nation will be making in the near future, and then contact your senator and congressman to let them know what you believe is the right thing to do.